Welcome to Exponential Talks. Uh, today we are with uh, Mohamed Nakhtari. Uh, very deeply privileged to have him here. He is the managing director of Toyota Lexus. And we're in this wonderful, wonderful place called the Intersect by Lexus. And I'm going to ask him about the story behind that. But in the meantime, I'd just like to welcome, welcome Mac. We Thank you very much. We're allowed to call him Mac, which is good. And uh, it just becomes so much easier to work with. Now, just in this sort of spirit of being different, uh, I thought we'd share a couple of slides to sort of set the tone in terms of the future of mobility. So the first thing I'd like to do is to take you on a future trip of mobility. Uh, this is a lovely video of what lifestyle is going to look like as we go into the future. And this is what your future car potentially would look like. And you'll be really moving from point to point. This will be your workspace. This will be your living environment. It'll be basically everything that you need. And really the question uh, to, uh, to you, Mac, is, yeah. is this real? I think it is, actually. I think it's very much coming at us at a very high speed. Um, probably not in the ways we expect because there's so many variables behind it. Right. Um, I, I take quite a fascination because my background is actually a mechanical engineer. I see. So um, <laughs> I'm fortunate to have been working in the car business, which is actually my hobby as well as a business that I, I enjoy. Yeah. Um, and I think when you, when you look at all these things that are coming together in terms of technology, in terms of energy, the environmental pressures in many, many, many cities, you will find that the requirements for accelerating this technology mm -hmm. will vary drastically. Mm -hmm. And I'm very fortunate to be working with TMC or Toyota Motor Corporation, which are very uh, much believers of, of this and the future is changing. Mm -hmm. They will no longer be manufacturers, but actually providers of mobility. Yeah. And the movement has started. Yes. Uh, the, the young generation coming into Toyota Motor Company are talking about no more boring cars. Are you making boring cars? Um, I think when he says that, there's two, two elements to right. it. One is reflecting today, because no doubt about it, we're still going to be selling petrol cars or hybrid mm -hmm. petrol for some time. Yeah. And uh, to a large extent, the Japanese have always been characterized as being very reliable, yeah. but not much more than that. So that's one of the changes he's made. And he's done it in quite a few things. I mean, in Lexus, you'll see some of the new cars coming out, like the LC500 sports car. Mm -hmm. We've never done it before. Mm -hmm. And that is exciting and interesting, and it yeah. sounds good as well. And, and the Lexuses that I've driven, they are outstanding, so yes. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about that. Yes. Uh, now, this was a little snapshot of the year 2030. Let's step back yes. 100 years, and let's look into the past. Uh, you, you, you don't know this picture, right? Everybody knows this picture? Uh, this is Easter uh, Day Parade, New York City. Um, and what do you see? Lots of horse-driven cars, right? You see any cars? Does anyone see any cars? No? Two cars. Okay, so if you went to this person and said, what would you like? You know what they will ask for? Or, or this person here? Faster horses. <laughs> it's actually not about faster horses. Because Ford Motor Company came in with a car, 13 years later, everything changed. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is with electric cars, self-driving cars, yeah. is this where we are going? And is this the speed? I'll be looking at by 2030, this is the new world, and we're not driving cars, we don't have driving licenses, no combustible engines. Are we going at this speed or not? Well, uh, again, it's very interesting because if you, if you look at um, the young leader of Toyota today, yeah. Akio Toyota, he's fourth generation. Yeah. He actually has used the same slide in many, many presentations around <laughs> the world. Okay. And, and uh, one of the hidden factors behind this change was New York around the, the turn of that century, uh, the 20th century, was having a big issue with horse manure, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that was pushing manufacturers to look at, at the time, electric, Mm -hmm. So many people might not know this, but Mercedes actually started doing uh, electric cars at the time. Okay. And then you had petrol, which was coming online, and of course, steam. Um, and then it just catapulted over those 13 years, as you say, 1912 there. Yes. And uh, before you know it, the petrol took over. Yeah. I think we are at the same uh, inflection point mm, where, where we will see all these things change. But 
there's a lot of things behind it because we talk about the battery electric cars and it's the best thing in some countries, no doubt about it, but it's not the best thing in every single country because if you're looking at the environmental concerns, really, and you say, you look at a country like the UAE, mm -hmm. where we rely on power generation from hydrocarbons, from basically natural gas mm -hmm. or, or diesel, all you'd be doing is shifting the issue from the uh, petrol tank mm -hmm. to the power station. So there's a lot more we have to do. We have to look at renewable energy, mm -hmm. and then we have to look at the size of the city, the distances, uh, the commuting cycle, and the age of the people, etc. So many, many, many factors that will influence this. And renewable energy, uh, uh, one of the things uh, was that uh, cars will actually become an environment to store energy yes. and have distributed energy out yes. there. Yes. And that's a very interesting perspective as opposed to having it in one place, you have it distributed. Yeah. So you don't need a power station, you actually have, just have a car and that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been things like in yeah. inductive uh, 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 charging for cars, electric yeah. cars, as they go on the highway, there is wires underneath. And yeah. um, I think all of those, those technologies are there today. It's yeah. just, just how do we put them and which one suits which city? Yeah. Um, so this is where I'll say again from a Toyota Motor Corporation yeah. and Lexus, we're looking at every solution. We're looking at hydrogen, we're looking at batteries, we're yeah. looking we're looking at a lot of things. So if you, uh, l let's keep UAE in mind, yes. Dubai Abu Dhabi, 180 uh, kilometers away. Uh, if you have a self-driving car with Lexus and you want to go this distance yeah. and you have a, a charging station halfway through and you charge a small amount of money or no amount of money, in this new model, where you can go from point A to point B and have minimal, negligible marginal cost. How does that change the business model for companies like yourselves? You see, I probably beg to differ with the model that you, you put. I actually think that autonomous cars are going to work really well in big cities, mm -hmm. where when you couple electric engines and autonomous mm -hmm. technology, you actually can uh, bring down the size dramatically. So whatever today we have as a taxi, you can probably put two autonomous pods, as was in your video, sure. and move people around the city fairly easy, 24 hours, mm -hmm. um, which also is a great thing for older generation. A lot of people talk about the young generation, but I actually think that you know, when I'm 70 or 80, well, rather than relying on my relatives, it would be great to be able to know that touch on an app, autonomous mm -hmm. pod picks you up. So I think around big cities with high density, definitely that's the way forward. Intercity, I'm not so sure about that. Fair right? enough. Uh, so if you are talking about uh, the urban environment, the world yes. is urbanizing much more. Yes. Um, so I think it sort of lends itself uh, towards that. But it's just a question in terms of thinking through business models sure. um, and so on. Let me just put a, a couple of slides just to sort of uh, share yep. them with you. Uh, 2030, cars in India, uh, all electric. Yep. Uh, Hyperloop, point A to point B. Now, we go to Abu Dhabi in eight minutes, 10 minutes. Awesome. Uh, awesome. <laughs> uh, now, would Lexus be investing in the next version of Hyperloop or in the next version of the mobility as we know it currently? Yeah, uh, we are definitely looking at the next version of mobility, uh, be it software applications, be it electric cars, autonomous cars, um, and beyond that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, the Hyperloop, I think, is it's, it's very futuristic, yes. and I haven't seen anything within our uh, industry that says that we'll be getting involved in that. I see. Uh, but the, the whole philosophy of Hyperloop to me is, is the where it is today. Yes. I mean, I'm a futurist also, so I mean, I'm, I'm sort of putting in my, my oar in, into this one, is that perhaps goods will start moving from A to B uh, in the next 10 to 15 years mm -hmm. fairly rapidly. But I think they still have to work out, uh, you know, mm. leaving, le leaving the human stomach and brain behind at Mach 4. Yeah. Uh, um, I think that's probably a bit further away. But anyway, Hyperloop will fundamentally change things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, drones and taxis. Uh, next year, uh, um, Uber is coming out with the Uber taxi drone yeah. uh, with uh, about 8 to 10 people. And it is a self-driving drone, but they're still putting um, people to drive sure. it. Not need it, but they're putting them up there. How does that impact your mobility strategy? Um, again, I think mo when we look at mobility, we're looking at on the ground transportation yeah. okay. um, and looking at how we can impact uh, different aspects of life. So, you know, it could be things like mobile shops, mm -hmm. which are autonomous. And instead of actually having to go to a shopping mall, 
somewhat, the shopping mall comes, comes to, to you. your <laughs> village or to your town. Yeah. Um, I think when you talk about uh, drones, you're looking at probably you know a different uh, aspect, which is a little bit like today, which you know you separate aviation from ground transport. Will it come across? It might, mm -hmm. but I think the regulations around uh, aviation is probably going to be a throttling point that we'll probably dodge for a long period of time. And mm -hmm. I, I don't see the auto industry you know, going there. I once had a, a sort of a, an epiphany when I, when, when I was discussing this that. When we're driving on the ground, we yes. actually have just one level of driving. So all the congestion points have on one level. But the moment we go up, True. we can basically do Although the air traffic control. You can go down as well. Or you can go down. As you can in go many down. cities in China, they have yes. multiple layers below the city. That's because right. Because they're too old. Yeah. So, so therefore, uh, you know, we can go both yeah. ways. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's part of that. Yeah. Okay. Another one, uh, using existing platforms mm. to create other business models. Yes. Uh, Uber's doing that. Um, are you creating as part of uh, some of the strategy that you're thinking of in terms of the future of mobility um, to, to, co uh, to, to create new platforms from within your organization? So rather than just yes. selling a vehicle, you sell a business platform. Yes, we, we are looking at that. So obviously cars are becoming connected now, mm -hmm. uh, not only between each other, but to, to the, the mothership, so to yeah. speak. And that brings up all sorts of uh, interesting ways in terms of managing fleets and how you, how you can help uh, businesses run their day-to-day -day operations more right. effectively. So that's, that's also coming along. Okay, a yeah. couple of more. Mm -hmm. um, this is a more metaphorical than anything else, yes. a, a Tesla moment. Uh, does everybody know what a Tesla moment is? Is O M G. <laughs> so my God, every company is going through a Tesla moment. Uh, think about them. I mean, uh, the hospitality industry went through a Tesla moment with Airbnb. Uh, there are others happening. What do you think in terms of the area of mobility is our Tesla, our O M G moment? Oh. You know, I'm more of an operational person than a futurist. Oh, um, yeah. But if I was to hazard, hazard a guess, um, I think uh, hydrogen is probably going to play yeah. a, a big role. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, a lot of players have been playing with hydrogen electric. Uh, we, we say hydrogen, but it's an electric car. It's a hydrogen cell. Mm -hmm. However, it seems to be now coming a little bit more clear that it, once again, it's hub based. Right. Uh, and of course, you've got the range. Yeah. Uh, you don't have the issues of recycling batteries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that could could be an oh my god okay. moment. Uh, one more, and then we'll sit and have a little chat. Sure. Uh, and this is about the future of uh, offices, mm. space on wheels. Mm. So let's just look at it. For a So basically, mobility is, is built around the space of where you want to be, yes. rather than, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, move it with that. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that, and then uh, let's just talk about it. So uh, any thoughts on that in terms of you being a more holistic partner in terms of business, in terms of offices, uh, yes. uh, and all of that? You see, this is where the border gets a little bit fuzzy. So. Yeah. As a partner, we are the distribution side today yeah. in the UAE. However, we do have insights, and that's exactly what they are looking at. They okay. are looking at autonomous moving offices, shops, uh, workshops, uh, and basically, and even medicine to move things around rather than to have them permanent. Um, and that looks very, very realistic. I mean, that's probably a, a leap in, into the future. In the typical Hollywood style, Mac, can we mm. do a little We'll go back in the past sure. and then move forward again. Uh, you said you were a mechanical engineer. Can yes. You just tell us a little bit about how that evolved and what brought you here to, to this day. 
Okay, well, um, I mean, I've always been fascinated with vehicles and anything with an engine, so I, I, I started getting involved quite heavily in playing with small engines, motorbikes from the age of eight, believe it or not. <laughs> Largely, a lot of these activities were probably not legal, <laughs> but then you have to put in mind that I came to the UAE in 73 with my family, with my father and mother. So in those days, there were very little restrictions on, on what you could do and couldn't do. So I got quite fascinated with motors and engines, and I wanted to take it to the next level. So I, I studied mechanical engineering in Coventry, which as you might know, you've got Jaguar, Land Rover, all the big names were there in, in the UK. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my fascination, that's where my, my background is. And it was your love? Uh, yes, and yes. It's your it passion. is very so you're actually not working, you're just living your passion? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> okay. yes. Um, how do you see uh, in this part of the world uh, all these different business models? Because the populations are quite small here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, so the propensity of, of being able to, to deliver to a small population becomes more and more challenging. Yeah. Do you see building adjacent industries? No, I, I think we do because we're already now at the point where probably the biggest thing for us in this part of the world is personal ownership. Everybody yeah. owns everything. Yeah. And now we are at that point where if you want to do something else mm -hmm. because of cost of living, etc., et a lot of pressure, actually I don't need to own the car. Yeah. So we can start to see that you know, new models are coming, financial models for ownership, where you don't need to own it, you have, it, you have the right to use it either per hour, per day, per month. So these, these tools and these models, we've already started building and we are offering them to customers. So, so do you think our children will be laughing at us uh, in 10, 15 years time saying, Dad, why do you own a car? Yes. 100%. Why do I need a driving license yes. and I can drive any car or be in any car? I, I, I think again, as I said earlier, I think yeah. if you're in big cities, yes. yes if you are outside the city, far away, you probably still will have a driving license. You might even still have a petrol car. I don't think they will be eliminated fully. You know, there will be a need for this, but it will become more of a specialist uh, tool. Tell us about your company. Uh, how big is uh, Lexus here? It's obviously, it was one of the, and Toyota as a general company, because it was one of the earliest yeah. uh, in this region. So we're, we're basically a family business, yes. Alpha Time. Yes. And uh, the franchise, they picked up Toyota all, almost 60 years ago. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been now with the family for going to the fourth generation mm -hmm. and um, in terms of distribution, you know, we have uh, for Lexus we have about 13 outlets mm -hmm. and for Toyota another 30. So overall about 50 outlets we have across yeah. the, the country, all Emirates. Yeah. You heard uh, futurists speak yeah. today, you heard yeah. about uh, changing business models and so yeah. on. Um, how are the business models changing and how comfortable or flexible are you yeah. with those changes? Well, you probably saw me laughing earlier. Yes, and yes. and, and, and um, while I'm not the CEO, but I do report to a CEO. And actually, the workload that comes where people are trying to struggle with the existing business and uh, you know the, the disruption and then the next level, mm -hmm. it's actually spot on. We struggle. There is no clear model. So everybody's trying to do everything at the same time. Mm -hmm with the consequences that you start to see people failing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think while we're trying to make the change, it, yeah. it, it will take some time to realize that balance. And I do like this 70, 20, 10. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the old financial model of, you know, 80% of your business yes. comes from 20% of your customers. Yeah. So I think this is, a, this is probably a good model from, from a, an investment of resource, where to invest the resources. Because today, we're not geared that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do like that. Uh, when, when we talk about the 70-20 rule, yeah. I actually live by the 70-20 rule. So this 70% is my core business. Right. This 20% is my edge business. And this is crazy stuff. Um, and the crazy stuff includes going on Netflix mm. and mm. doing mm. moonshots and building it up. And, yes. and this is how I, I, you know, I think. Yeah. Um, do you, you use a, a, a very sensitive word for me. Uh, you said, oh, if you do that, we you know, think we might fail. Mm. Why is failure such a word which is scaring? I mean, I'm not good at failing. Yeah. Um, I have become much, much better. I'm a classic failure now. Uh, oh. But I, my parents never taught me how to fail. Mm. I failed my accountancy exam for the very first time when I was 23 years old. And it was absolute, I, it was a complete, almost nervous breakdown. Yes. Because I never learned how to fail. 
in this new world, don't you think we need to learn how to fail? No, absolutely. Or uh, is it experimentation or whatever the word is? Yeah, no, I think we, we definitely have to. The, the issue is that we're driven financially. Everything we see in the modern world is all financially driven. And that's, that's a problem, you know. Um, I remember some years back using a, a different example about, from not an automotive industry, but from the soft drinks. Mm -hmm when Red Bull was launched, I think in the early 90s. And I, was, I had a friend who worked with this company and you, you look at the concept, who's going to buy a can that's half the size of a Coke that doesn't really taste that good and it's gonna be five or six times the price, I can't remember, it's a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. It just seemed to be madness. Yeah. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's the thing, if you wanna be innovative, you have to do mad stuff. You keep on saying mad, but you are absolutely right. The problem yeah. is that we go down these financial models mm -hmm. and the industry keeps on taking people from the banking industry and yeah. it just makes it harder and harder where now failure is, a dra is drastic. Yeah. And, and of course, that's not going to take us yeah. to the next level. You know, one of the, um, when I come to this particular environment, one of the things I absolutely love is that this is an experiment by Lexus, an automobile yeah. company, yes. in a lifestyle concept. It is, very much so. Yeah. And, and, and experiential. Experiential. That's correct. And, and I, you know, I, I'm fascinated by it because you're, the leather in, in, in the seats mm -hmm. is from the car and the, the chassis there yeah. and the parts of the, engine, of the engine there. there. Yeah, yeah. And, and I find it fascinating. And, and how else are you expanding your, your, your franchise? Because this is beautiful. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we are, we're looking at all the, I would say, almost classic things by futuristic standards, so mm -hmm. all the digit, how we approach our customers digitally, because yeah. we were very traditional in our approach. Okay. So we are building up on this more and more. Right. Um, and, uh, and we are looking at different ways, as I said, financially, we're looking at different mm -hmm. ways of delivering cars to customers without having to own the car. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are engaging people and developing people within your, your environment, how do you take them forward? How do you transform them as a business leader? Yeah, I mean, there, there's two sides to that. And if you let the financial side dictate it, it's, yeah. it's quite, it's very dry. But I, what I like to look into people is I like to look the drive, the excitement and the interest. Mm -hmm. I, I, personally, I never look much at the CVs. I mean, it's important, but it's a statement that probably was prepared by somebody else. As you, all know. <laughs> you can do it on the internet. Yeah. What I'm far more interested in is looking at people's attitude and aptitude for the business. Right. And if they have that, yeah. then it's very easy to develop them and take them forward uh, because they just have that energy and they constantly want to learn and, it, and that's really easy to interact with. Uh, I was teaching a Harvard Business School executive management class and mm. uh, 71 students there and they were saying, so uh, how long should the CV be? And I said, well, you know, 71 people here, as far as I'm concerned, you're a commodity, yeah. a high level commodity, a well qualified commodity, but just a commodity. I cannot select between you. So then we came to a conclusion, it said, uh, they all said, we have to have a one-page CV. So everybody agree, you need a one-page CV? You do? Yeah? No. I said two pages. You know why? This side is all your successes, your qualifications, your degrees and so on. And this side is your failure CV, wow. guys. Things you screwed up at, yeah. things you messed up, things you learned. Because what I'm looking for in the future, in this crazy exponential world, is people with heart, yeah. people with humility people who have the ability to bounce back. And I can add to that, that if you've got a fresh grad, and yeah. in this country now we're quite a bit of pressure on expatriate management to recruit locals. Yeah. So when you're going fresh picking a yeah. fresh graduate, yeah. there is no CV. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of my management team, when we say, well, you know, you've got a percentage and you have to achieve, they say, well, how are we supposed to re recruit? <laughs> so going back to this attitude and aptitude, yeah. for example, when we're recruiting in the technical side, yeah. if you put a dirty old component, water pump, for example, on yeah. the table. Yeah. And make sure it's dirty, greasy, and oily. Yeah. And just leave it there. Yeah. The guy with, or the girl with attitude and aptitude will just naturally pick it up and go, oh yeah, you know what, this is from, I don't know, a Chrysler or yeah, a yeah, Dodge yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And will not pay any attention to the condition. The person who's least interested and is only looking for a job mm -hmm. would never get close to it. No CVs needed. Oh, what a wonderful story. Thank you. Thank you for that. No, my pleasure. <laughs> no, it, it, it is. It is. Because I think these are the nuggets that, yes. that makes this, 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 this type of sure. uh, talk. Uh, any other areas that you'd like to talk about in terms of development and growth within your organization that we may have missed? And while I change this thing. Yeah, I, I, I think I mean, one of the things that are very dear to my heart is uh, the environmental side and how yeah. can we help reduce our impact. Um, because I know we are come from an industry that's been 
terrible, to yeah. say the least. So one of the things that we're working very uh, strongly on is our new facilities now. We're going quite heavy on the recycling. So we just opened a, a new location in DIP for Lexus. And if, you, if you're fortunate to go above it, which yeah. either with a drone or if you're flying over, you'll see it's reflecting. It's all photosensitive. So solar panels all over the place. So we're trying to cut our bill by 30%. But more importantly, we're gearing up for the future where we've got charging points and we don't sell yet battery uh, charged cars. Right. But in the future, we can charge it for free. Because as I said, if you don't have renewable energy, it doesn't la really make a lot of sense. And now, I mean, this is amazing to hear that because uh, when you're walking your talk and you, when you're purpose driven, yeah. then you'll attract amazing people. Yes. And, and, a, and a different type of uh, people and will people, come to no? you. Absolutely. Um, this is a. When I was doing some research, I uh, came up with this. Uh, this is unpacking a car. And yes. Literally taking all the components out. And I was shocked at the number of components and moving parts in a car. Now, two elements. Uh, in a self-driving Tesla, for example, you mm. have X number of parts. But if in a combustible engine, you have more parts that can fail. Yes. Uh, are we going towards fewer parts and more intelligence? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And uh, I think a couple of weeks ago with the consumer, uh, um, uh, what's it called, CES? CES, yeah. yes, yes. You probably saw Sony launched the first car. Yeah. Uh, and it just shows you how easy it is to make uh, electric cars compared yeah. to the old mechanical ones where there's a lot of uh, complexity. The average petrol car has probably around 80 to 100,000 parts. Yeah. So it's really a quite a warning uh, signal that all these big factories will become redundant uh, when we go fully electric. So if we're looking at the future of mobility, are we looking at an app on wheels? Uh, possible, um, possible. And therefore servicing will be almost in, in yeah, negligible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, already we'll see this like a... Well, like already a in today's terms, the average petrol car lifespan is 200,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Electric is 800,000. Mm -hmm. During that 800,000, there's hardly any need for any maintenance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So from a distributor point of view, you know, you, you can see your model is coming to an end rapidly. Right. Um, and from a technology point of view, yes, an app. And then you couple that to ownership or no ownership. Correct. Which brings a bigger dilemma because where does the distributor fit here? Mm -hmm. when, there is, when, when everybody will tell you that with autonomous, the manufacturer is probably going to have to own the car from cradle to grave. Yeah. The other thing which I always find it fascinating is it's in the watch industry, yep. it's also the same in the car industry, is you know, you just get from point A to point B. Every, all the watches just tell you the time. True. <laughs> I mean, what's the True, difference? But some are lifestyle. Well, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So how do you differentiate yourselves t in today's world? Um, is it through purpose, through lifestyle, through product? How are you differentiating? I think Lexus, I mean, we, we, are, we, we categorize, categorize ourselves in the luxury segment. And when you're in the luxury segment, it's all about experience. And we've already started doing the change in the way we launch product. You know, the traditional way of an MD standing up and talking about all the features and benefits, it's really boring for people. And even, you know, when you have news editors and heads of magazines, they'll tell you that. They're only there because they want to get the keys and test drive the vehicle. Yeah. Right. So you have to come uh, with experiences, which becomes quite challenging when your budgets are tight and yeah. all of that. But there are ways and means of doing it. Same thing for the consumer. Mm -hmm. He's looking for an experience. Yeah. And, and you mentioned this, you know, Intersect by Lexus. This was a experiment driven by Akio Toyota. Started in Japan, then Dubai, 2015. And last year they just opened one in uh, New York. And every one, the experience gets more diverse and more wild. Mm -hmm. So the one in New York is quite, quite big and, and, and something different. Mm -hmm. So it's about delivering an experience. It's not just a, a car. In most yeah. industries, you have the core, which is the base. But there's so many adjacencies and so many elements that are coming in and plugging yes. in there. It, so our catchment area is becoming bigger and bigger rather than narrow. Correct. Is that the right way or to look at the future of mobility or is it? No, 100%. 100%. Okay. That's the right way because yeah. the, the mechanical element is diminishing right. and it's all the other areas that you need to add value to the consumer and to be relevant, I think, is the, is the big one. So I love to play this video. Uh, it's one of my favorites where in this world, mm. it's either fear or hope. So do, are you fearful for the future? Or are you hopeful for no, the future? No, I'm hopeful. I'm okay. very hopeful. So this is about a, a lady that's put into a self-driving car for the first time, an old lady. 
and just see what happens to her, which is, 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 is fun for you guys. Her first day out, and then she is really, really struggling. Um, this is about control, isn't it, Mac? Yes. I mean, we are lo she lost control. Are you losing control? Are we losing control of our destiny within this space? Well, I, I think I alluded earlier at the beginning. Uh, yeah. From my personal perspective, yeah. I'd love to have autonomous car when I get older. Okay. Because as your vision diminishes, as your physical capabilities reduce, yeah. you start to rely on the people around you. Answer. And actually, I think I think it'll be the opposite yeah. because you know we already know today that you know artificial intelligence will do things ten times better than we will, yeah. especially repetitive stuff. Yeah. So it's, it won't be that case. You'll yeah, be actually yeah, yeah. sitting in, enjoying it, going out, seeing your friends, and, right. and, and you know, extending your life. One of the, the funny things I, I, I say about uh, this particular experience of losing control, I yeah. said this is not a little old lady getting nervous. It's actually RTA when uh, when Kareem and uh, Uber walk in. Yeah. Uh, this is Ete Salat <laughs> and Do when WhatsApp chat walks yeah, in. Exactly. And this is the scream of humanity when technology comes in, and, and, and of society when technology comes yeah, in. Yeah. And so, as a final message, I'm looking at. We've got Moses there. Can you get Moses? No, I'll get it on him afterwards. <laughs> but it's, it's this whole transformation. I mean, we basically need Moses to open the space for you guys to go through. Yeah. So what is the miracle that you feel if you had a, a dream on? What would be that miracle that you'd be looking for in your industry? Well, uh, I think the, the, the solution for us for tomorrow is, is, as I said earlier, renewable energy and batteries. How can we come up with a battery that you can put infinite amount of energy yeah. into and you don't have all the toxicity and the recycling issues right now? So. We can see the solution, but we've got these, these two big issues. So renewable energy and a battery that's user friendly and we'll just go flying. And my final question, if we put you in a, in a capsule, in a time machine, and we take you into the future, and today is your 150th birthday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are we celebrating? Uh, what are you looking at? What are you thinking about? Well, I, I think by that point in time, uh, my fears of the different industries would have vaporized mm -hmm. and we'll probably have a, a, a unit of some sort that just takes you on the ground or in the sky or intergalactic. Mm -hmm. I think would be way beyond that, probably some kind of time, time traveling. Okay. So and what would your kids be doing and grandchildren? Now, that's a tough question. I have no clue because you look at each one. I've got a daughter and I, I, I look at the way she thinks and where she wants to go and what she wants to do and it's probably completely different than, than what I would be doing. I yeah. have no clue. But, but isn't that part of the fun? Yes, of, it is. Uh, it is. Unpredictability. The future. Unpredictability. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt Mac, about it. It's been a delight talking to you and for you sharing all your experiences and, and being so candid. No, and thank you very much. And I, I also want to thank you and your audience for using our beautiful facility Intersect and uh, it's, it's great it's to have you here. It's please, a real please keep coming.